Hey everybody, welcome back to class. This is module three, the stimulants. And with this module, we are gonna get now into looking week by week at these different categories or classifications of different uh, drug or substance types. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm someone, I need structure. I kind of like a little bit of structure. I'm a pretty structured, organized person, I think. And I, I'm kind of a believer that most of us need some kind of structure. And I always appreciate it when things are organized so that it's easier for me to understand something. And when you think about all the different substances and all the different drugs and alcohol that's out there kind of in our world that we could talk about, it's easy to get really kind of overwhelmed once you start thinking about all the different things that are out there. So many years ago, people began to organize and put together kind of like a classification or organization system of, diff, uh, of, of families or classes of different substances. And that's kind of how we've organized our class basically is each and every week, starting with this week, we're gonna have these, we're gonna be looking at these different classes of substances. This week, it's the stimulants. Uh, next week, we'll look at the, what's called the depressants and the week after that, the medicines and then on and on and on and on. And kind of the idea with all these different drug classes is they normally are organized around the pharmacology of the substances. What do they do inside the body? When we ingest them pharmacologically, what happens to our heart rate and to our central nervous system and to our, uh, our, our breathing and respiration and to our brain function? What, what, what natural pharmacological effect do each of these substances have upon us? And so that's kind of how many of these classes are kind of built. It's kind of around what do they do in the body? What kind of effect do they have? And that's true for the stimulants. The stimulants are what they say they are. They are a class of substances that because of the pharmacology of those substances, how they are created chemi chemically, when, they, when, we, when we ingest them in the body, we swallow them, we drink them, we inject them, we snort them. What, they, what those substances do naturally is they, is they stimulate our central nervous system. They naturally have the effect where they increase our heart rate and they increase our respiration and they kind of quicken our brain and cognitive function, right? Called the stimulants. There are certain drugs that do the opposite of that. We'll talk about those next week. We'll talk about the depressants because there are other substances, of course, that do the opposite of that. When we ingest them, they slow things down. Other substances speed things up. So that's what the stimulants are. And so the stimulants are, uh, are substances both legal and illegal, legal and illicit, which is true for most of the drug classes we're going to talk about in this class, is true for the, subs, for, the, for the stimulants. Many of these drug classes or families have both legal and illegal substances within them, and that's true for the stimulants. And we'll talk about that here in just a second as we just kind of do a little review of this uh, module. The stimulants naturally, usually when someone ingests or uses or a, sub, a, a stimulant, it naturally makes us more alert because it kind of speeds up our, um, our our cognitive function. It has it oftentimes gives us sort of a sense of alertness or focus in a way naturally. Um, oftentimes we feel a sense of increased energy, and so lots of times stimulants are used when people feel lethargic or they're tired or whatever. If you uh, use a certain stimulant, then you begin to feel a little bit more of a rush of energy. And also too, there is a general sense of well-being and euphoria. Uh, something about kind of speeding up our uh, speeding up our, our central nervous system, kind of kind of a little bit of getting our focus kind of going in a way, kind of feels good in a way. And so, in a way, there is this mild in most cases. That sometimes it's, it can be more than mild. This mild sense of euphoria and pleasure that tends to come with most of the stimulants. Okay, that's kind of, that's kind of what they generally do. When what's generally what they do for us psychologically and pharmacologically as well to the stimulants. And so let me just review for you real, real quickly. Again, these videos I post every single week really are just intended to give you a little quick overview of what you're going to be reading about in your lecture notes as you prepare to do your discussion question and your homework assignment. Our modules kind of brief this week, so that's fine. Uh, there are two key illicit stimulants and drugs that fall in this family. And I mentioned both of them to you and your textbook also outlines them in, in much greater detail. And those two stimulants are cocaine and methamphetamine. So all of us are familiar probably with what cocaine is, at least you've heard the term before. And my hunch is you know what methamphetamine is or what meth is, at least you've heard of it. Both of those substances are stimulants. Now they are, they are, we would say, extreme stimulants and they're both illicit 
uh, as far as they are illegal for the most part. In some cases, cocaine can be legal in some ways for medical purposes, but for the most part, it is a street drug, just as methamphetamine is. Methamphetamine and cocaine are are different from each other, but I like to say they're cousins. So you you may have some cousins. You you all are related to each other, but you're not the same like like as far as brothers and sisters, right? Methamphetamine, meth and cocaine are different from each other as far as substance. They're, they're two unique individual substances, but they're in the same family. They're cousins to each other in a way. So I give you some information in the lecture notes this week about cocaine, the different forms of cocaine, a little bit of history on that. Methamphetamine, a little bit of background on what meth is and and, uh, and kind of how it kind of fits into our culture today. Again, especially methamphetamine, we still see today, especially in the last generation, cocaine still, again, uh, is, is, is a drug of abuse that we still do see quite a bit, but really methamphetamine is, is really what we see more oftentimes than cocaine. And today we still see it's in the news. Sometimes I heard a news story not long ago and, and actually heard overheard a conversation not long ago. A person was talking about, um, a situation in their life where they had they had encountered and were dealing with a person who they believed was a meth addict, and they were sort of talking about how they believed this person um, was getting money from them to buy meth. It was kind of was kind of the conversation I was a part I was sort of a part of, so to speak. So methamphetamine and cocaine are two illicit substances that belong to this family. So read about those in your textbook and also to in your lecture notes. And then there are the legal stimulants. So some of we're, we're going to talk here in a couple of weeks about the medicines. So there are some prescription stimulants that you can go to a doctor and a doctor may prescribe for you uh, but to help you with something. The two most common are Adderall and Ritalin. You probably have heard of Adderall and Ritalin, which are used predominantly for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD. Um, Ritalin and Adderall are, are really stimulants. Back in the day when I worked in a children's mental health clinic, we had a lot of kids who came in who were on stimulant medicine through the psychiatrists. And I had a parent one time say, um, is it OK for my son to take Ritalin? And I said, well, I said, you need to talk to the nurse or the, or, or the psychiatrist about that. But I know we have a lot of kids who do take Ritalin. And she said, isn't it just speed? Someone told me Ritalin was just basically legal speed. And I said to her, Ritalin is a, sti I said, if you want to call it speed, you can. I said, Ritalin is a stimulant. Absolutely. That's what it is. And if you want to call it speed, you can call it that. But I said, that's really what Ritalin does. Ritalin stimulates the, the central nervous system. We believe that part of what causes ADHD is an underactivity of certain parts of the brain, which is interesting, underactivity in certain parts of the brain, which then exhibit themselves in poor attention and over hyperactivity. And so Ritalin has been found, for example, in Adderall, if they st to stimulate certain parts of the brain, what happens is it kind of calms people down a little bit as far as their behavior and also gives them more focus and more attention. So Ritalin and, um, and, and Adderall are two examples of prescription stimulants. There are what we call some old school prescription stimulants around like Benzedrine. Maybe you've heard that term before. Uh, some of the earliest ways we used to treat depression back in the 50s and the 60s, before we had Prozac and Wellbutrin and Zoloft and all the stuff we use today, um, psychiatrists and doctors found that if they prescribed um, stimulant medicines like Benzedrine to people who were real depressed and kind of lethargic and real sleepy, that it kind of pepped them up. And they felt better for a little while. They felt less depressed. Now, they're real short acting. And so people had to take a lot of them. And unfortunately, people then became addicted to them because they had the potential for addiction. Um, but one of the things we found was that in the early days of treating depression, initially, some of these stimulant drugs like, like Benzedrine were used like almost like as antidepressants. We don't do that. Any, we don't do that anymore because we have other medicines today we can use that do a better job. Um, and aren't as addictive or aren't addictive at all in many ways. But but back but there are still some old school prescription stimulants like Benzedrine that are out there. And then there is this one. There is this legal stimulant, and it is called caffeine. I give you some information in this in the module this week, and your textbook also discusses caffeine. You might be surprised, maybe not, that we discuss caffeine in a class like this. Caffeine absolutely is a substance. It is a substance of abuse, potentially. People can become dependent upon uh, caffeine. If you've ever, if you're a coffee drinker or a soda drinker or an energy drink drinker, and you have drunk, have, have drunk those, those uh, beverages for a long time, and then you've tried to fast from them or quit them, and then you have a headache and the dry mouth, those withdrawal symptoms, because your body is craving that stimulant called caffeine. Uh, when I drive to the college, 
uh, to teach classes when I'm teaching on campus, um, I come by a Starbucks and maybe you do too. And usually almost every single morning when I come by Starbucks about 730, the line is around the building and out into the street, the line of cars is so so the so the, the line goes around the building and into the street blocking traffic oftentimes usually about half the time i have to go around the starbucks traffic because it's in the street now starbucks is just one example of where we see caffeine and coffee but there's a reason why people are drawn to coffee right number one people love the taste of it but often too especially in the mornings people love coffee in the mornings because they find that as they wake up and get kind of kind of going to groggy a little bit kind of get their day going they found they have found that a good warm cup of coffee kind of gives them that sense of helps them helps them get their day off to a good start psychologically but also too physically it gives them that boost it gives them that pep oftentimes right so caffeine is one of those things we don't think about oftentimes but it belongs in this family of stimulants that's what that's what caffeine caffeine is a mild stimulant but it is a stimulant substance so cocaine methamphetamine prescription medications like adderall and ritalin and benzedrine and caffeine those are the core four or five substances that belong to the stimulants. Very, very important for us to be aware of them. If you're going to work in the field of social services, again, to be aware of both the legal and the illegal stimulants and what they are and what they do, a little bit of history. So look for that as you go through this module. Look at your lecture notes after watching this video. Do your discussion question. Do your homework. Come back next week and we're going to go to the other end of the spectrum. And we're going to talk about what we call the, what, what we used to refer to. I still refer to them as the depressants. The depressants are medicines like these that we just talked about, but they have the opposite effect. They tend to slow down, right, our, our, our metabolism and our central nervous system. And so oftentimes when people feel anxious, the depressant, a depressant medication is given to kind of bring someone down, right? Usually a stimulant is used to bring someone up, okay? So the stimulants for this week, the depressants next week, come back and look at... Uh, the video next module and have a great week this week. See you then.